So a quick question we've had is should you convert a single mass flywheel to a dual mass flywheel? So this brings us to the interesting debate as to what a flywheel is, what it's doing in your engine and how changes to the flywheel can affect your car's performance and power. <laughs> So firstly, what is a flywheel? Well, on the side of the engine, there is a big metal disc and its job really is just to store kinetic energy from the engine. So you remember those cars you played with as a child that you used to rev up and let go and the little flywheel inside that would store up the revving action that you made and carry that car further. Well, it's very, very similar in your engine. So the flywheel is helping the engine to smooth out the little lumps and bumps that you get with an internal combustion engine, keeping everything running smoothly. And if you hit a hill or downhill and an incline or something, it maintains the engine RPM more easily at that constant rate. So without the flywheel, the engine would bog down really quickly the minute you hit a hill. Now the downside of having a heavy flywheel is that the RPMs change very, very slowly. So in a competition environment where you want to rev match for example on your down changes of gear you want very quick responses to the throttle input so the engine revs will climb or drop very very quickly the only effective way of achieving that in a modern engine really is to reduce the weight of the flywheel now with flywheel weights you can go to extremes so obviously if you went to a really light flywheel you would create a car that is probably ideally suited for the track environment with constant RPM changes but would be an absolute nightmare on the day-to-day -day roads. You'd have to make constant throttle adjustments just to maintain a constant speed which can be quite draining and it can damage your fuel economy to some extent as well. So there's a certain degree of flexibility in how heavy or how light you should go with your flywheel but if you have to change your clutch it's not much extra work to change the flywheel so it's a good opportunity to just think about this mod and what it's going to do for your car and your enjoyment of the car. Now a lot of cars actually have a dual mass flywheel so instead of just one spinning weight on the side of the engine there's a spring mechanism that connects a second spring and that effectively reduces a lot of vibration from the engine. So you see this a lot in modern diesel engines particularly, but lots of gasoline engines also have the dual mass flywheel. So they're often slated as being unreliable because the fatigue that the springs have is quite extensive and eventually they will fail and you'll get lots of vibrations from it as it's failing. So a lot of people assume that they're just problematic devices and then they go out and get a single mass flywheel thinking it's going to be better. But that's actually doing a great job at reducing the vibrations from the engine. So when people have converted a dual mass flywheel engine to a single mass flywheel, in a lot of cases, they just report lots more vibration it's taking a toll on the transmission because you've got more vibration going through it and the engine is not as nice to drive it's not as smooth as it once was and they often regret that decision so find out from someone with the same model of car as you if they've had a flywheel converted from the dual mass to single mass and whether it adversely affected the way the engine operated and if it did think twice go with a lighter dual mass flywheel instead of opting for that single mass flywheel so I hope this video has been useful to you. Please subscribe if you haven't done so and boot that like button. We would love you to stay tuned. We've got lots more topics coming up to help you get the best performance from your engine and from your car. So please stick around and watch this next video that I've lined up for you.